Hi there. Now in this video we will extend the uh, original circle flow of income model into a Keynesian model. Uh, the idea here is to understand, try to understand, we will be trying to understand the how aggregate demand affects the national income. If you remember, I've described it in a, a simple model where the uh, aggregate demand or the injections, expenditure on domestic made goods and services stimulate the income rise in these injections stimulate the income so we will now kind of uh, offer a formal uh, interpretation of this model or formalize this simple model using ideas from Keynes mm, simple Keynesian model uh, John Maynard Keynes was an economist, British economist uh, and he basically became a bit uh, a bit celebrity during the 1930s, uh, 29 and 30s uh, American financial crisis. He helped the American government to uh, uh, bring back the economic activity uh, of the early 20th, 1920s. After the First World War, the American economy grew fast, but then came 19. Uh, 29 the American economy tanked again and Keynes was instrumental in, in uh, lifting the uh, output in, uh, national output back to the, its original uh, levels uh, by his own uh, using his own sort of ideas if you if you may have watched the uh, the rap video that I uploaded on the QM plus uh, he talks about this uh, instance in this rap video well, his impersonator basically talks about it. Okay, so the theory is based on uh, based on Keynes' own uh, general theory, uh, or he basically calls this theory a general theory of economy, where he talks about uh, government intervention should there be a recession. Um, however, the model uh, ignores the uh, price levels. Basically, it, it assumes that there is no inflation having no inflation basically in the economy makes things very much simplified uh, in the next uh, few uh, uh, videos we will see that inflation is an important component of this analysis anyway let's uh, move ahead now so his central argument is this that the level of production depends on the level of aggregate demand so in other words if there is demand there will be more production but then in recession there is not much demand because well there is not much income so he told, to, told the American government to inject cash into the economy by um, well financing public spend uh, public uh, projects such as building dams if I remember he built a dam in a state he proposed a building a dam well Americans proposed it out upon his suggestions and advice to build a dam which actually provided jobs um, that implied basically Americans had to borrow cash from outside sources. Anyway, so his his idea is basically to stimulate demand, aggregate demand. So by that, what what I mean is that those people who work now, who have jobs now in the recession, will spend money in uh, to buy goods. So the producers of goods will then start producing. That implies they will obviously employ people then. So more uh, more production implies more income more income implies a greater further production and more investment higher taxes higher taxes implies greater revenue for the economy so for the government to spend on uh, expenditures you know to to make uh, public public projects to the public projects okay um, the the question still remains however this is a very general theory so the question is how much will national income change as aggregate demand changes we will ultimately answer this question, but in this in this uh, in this video, I will just describe the simple model first, and in the following model, following videos, we will describe the multiplier, um, Keynesian multiplier that talks uh, that that helps us to assess the uh, extent to which national income changes as aggregate demand changes. So let's go back to our original uh, model of circle flow of income. If you remember. Households, uh, the suppliers of factors of production, labor, uh, capital, and technology or land. 
in return, uh, the market sector, the, e the, the, the firms will pay incomes, wages, rent payments, and things like this to the household. So income is determined by the level of e economic activity or firm's output. In return, um, households then consume goods and services produced by the market sector, the firms. We also talked about the, well, in equilibrium, the incomes would equal to consumption of domestically produced goods. But then we have withdrawals in the form of savings, tax uh, expenditure, and inputs. While we also have injections, which is investments, uh, the components of which is, is investment are investments, government expenditure, and experts expenditure. Now, um, this is kind of self-sustaining uh, flow of income between the participants or the uh, agents in the economy. However, this is not the case all the time. There is always disequilibrium in the economy. Either the injections are greater sometimes or the withdrawals are greater or lower. It either can happen. So we usually do not uh, observe the in uh, equilibrium uh, uh, position of the economy. However, changes in any of these uh, injections or withdrawals will have, will have an uh, effect on uh, national income. For example, I gave an example of a case where injections were greater in the, in the last, uh, last video. But now let's get back to it again and, and we summarize what, what, what we uh, discovered there. Basically, if injections are greater, so in other words, if you look at this, the J, the J is greater than the W, W with withdrawals, well, national income rises. Well, with the national income rising, what happens is that, uh, uh, if I go back, national income refers to this part of the arrow here. You see this side? So, income rising means national income rising. So, if the economy is populated by five people, if their income rises, then the whole national income is basically rising as a result. Now, what happens when the national income rises? Well, uh, withdrawals will eventually rise because not all everything, not everything, all the money that these people as receive will go into consumption of goods and services made domestically. Part of it will be obviously savings, not everything will be uh, consumed, so also part of it would be going to taxes. Government will tax, increase the taxes as the economy is in, uh, doing very well, tax revenue will increase, and also part of the income would go into imports as well, imported goods as well. So withdrawals obviously then rise until, until the withdrawals equals the the uh, so it's here. The withdrawals equal the injections. So equilibrium is stored again, restored in other words. What if in uh, in other cases? What if uh, withdrawals are greater than the injections? Then, well, a lot of money is being taken away from the economy, so it's not injected back into the economy as much as it could be. Well, banks are holding back from investing, government is not spending much, or there is, uh, uh, there is more demand, greater demand for uh, uh, in, uh, foreign produced goods, so imported goods. That leads, to national, that, that leads to national income to fall. If the national income falls, in other words, national income falls because injections are falling. Yeah, if the withdrawals are greater, than injections, not every pound saved is being spent means basically a uh, low amount of economic activity and a low hiring, higher unemployment, uh, sales are uh, declining and a low, pr a low amount of goods are produced. So national income eventually falls, wages will be cut, uh, redundancies will be made. So that leads then obviously if the national income, if I go back here, if say, if the, if say the, the government withdraws more, oops, government withdraws more than it injects, for example, or uh, the banks save or carry on holding back from investing or borrow a lending, so credit becomes more uh, restricted, or there is little expert demand, then what happens is that the, 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 the firms will have to cut back, because they are not expecting to produce more, so they will cut back, so some people in this household become unemployed. Some people may keep their jobs, but then their income is not rising. So overall national income falls as well as a result. So remember, we started with withdrawals being higher than the injections. Now, because the incomes are declining, then there will be less saving, 
less tax income and less import demand. That implies then withdrawals fall as a result in general, and then this will they will fall up until the point where j equals w eventually. So we restore the equilibrium again. So that's what the Keynesian uh, Keynes idea was about. So we have this boom and bust, but then we have to uh, keep stimulating the economy to maintain the equilibrium point. This all these uh, ideas can be now expressed in, or better explained using Keynesian diagrams. There are two methods mm. to show them. First, uh, the withdrawals and injections approach, and the second, uh, the uh, income and expenditure approach. So let's look at the uh, injections and withdrawals approach. Withdrawals and injections approach. Now we use the good old xy plane. The y axis shows us the uh, the monetary values or uh, money values of uh, consumption withdrawals and injections so they are all in pounds and sterling and also x-axis shows us the income level so we are mapping uh, some variables in an y and expenditure and injections uh, plane consumption plane here there is no time dimension here so the anything that we draw will be uh, at each level of y and consumption here so y is income now first let's draw the uh, the it's already drawn here as you can see w curve this is the withdrawals curve i tried to make it animated but it didn't do go well again okay so uh, animation doesn't work for some reason anyway um withdrawals as you can see increase over time oh, well, as the, at, at different income levels so as our income level increases as people people's income levels increase per capita income say wages increase maybe rent wages increase rent payments increase or land rent payments increase at each income level withdrawals are rising this makes sense because as we become richer and richer what we do usually we save more well even if we save a little fraction of our income because our income is rising the savings will increase yeah even if it's a uh, fraction uh, stays constant and also government tax revenues increase because incomes are rising implies greater amount of tax will be paid at even if the tax rate cha doesn't change more income means more tax anyway so you have national insurance contributions income tax payee taxes employer corporation taxes all of them are rising here now and uh, also as our income rises that simply implies we are buying more we will be buying more imported goods we could be buying more domestic goods as well obviously but uh, with the income rising means we are most likely uh, advanced economy advanced economies usually uh, for advanced economies usually the uh, domestically made goods are more more expensive than the imported goods so withdrawals as a result rise with the level of income however Notice that injections curve, J curve, stays constant at any income level. Well, this doesn't necessarily mean that injections or aggregate demand doesn't change as we become richer over time. It does change. It does change, but it's just with the different levels of income, the decision to inject into the economy doesn't change. It's just, it really depends on the situation in the economy. So income level, basically, uh, the, sorry, injections do not depend on, uh, or uh, income levels do not affect the injections decision to inject you know, the cash into the business. So it's the, it's it's the, so investments, government expenditure, or anything else are independent of the decision of, uh, or independent of the income levels. In other words, so given this, now let's start from a point. So by the way, where the w and j cross is is this is the equilibrium point here of uh of the income of the economy basically at, and then we'll we'll basically pin down the equilibrium output soon national income so that this is more national income in other words so let's start with a lower level of income at a lower level of income for an economy for example say say why one at this point as you can see injections are greater than the withdrawals in other words there is a greater demand or injections exceed the withdrawals and withdrawals are lower well what it implies is that if you remember if the injections are higher uh, there will be greater amount of investment greater amount of uh, government spending and also greater amount of 
expenditure, uh, export expenditure, so demand for our goods, which uh, then leads us to leads the firms to employ more workers, more workers paid higher wages over time and more capital is hired means their incomes rise so as a result our income is rising over time that also implies if you remember the withdrawals increase as the income rises so we're tending towards this equilibrium point here now let's look at the other uh, at the other extreme that's the uh, where the y2 is greater than the, uh, the equilibrium point in this case our withdrawals are higher than the injections in the economy so income is basically falling in other words a great amount of income is taken away from the economy so it's not being injected back to the economy that implies basically uh, we uh, uh, the, the the firms will stop producing as much they do not invest as much because there is little amount for them to to invest in in other words borrow to borrow and invest in from financial markets and also government is not in injecting into the economy is not uh, carrying out pro uh, uh, projects basically and also there is also a lot of uh, high demand for imported goods than the expected uh, demand than the expert demand that implies there is little activity here in the in the production production sector the market sector basically so uh, because of this the firms do not employ as many people as they could they might even lay off because there is little demand for their domestically produced goods so the income eventually falls that falling income obviously implies lower tax revenues and lower savings and also lower demand for import goods so eventually withdrawals fall as well and the fall uh, occurs or comes to the point where uh, the, or the income falls up to a point where income sorry withdrawals equal the injections so that would be this level here x point at the income y e equilibrium point so this way the equilibrium uh, in the market economy or the macro economy is achieved and this was the idea of genes as well that uh, depending on where we stand we should either increase or decrease the withdrawals or injections now here's a quick question here why might withdrawals be negative and if you look at this which i skipped earlier i didn't mention this the the, the withdrawals line is actually going goes down below the y-axis and and then if you map this on the uh, sorry not y-axis it's x-axis if you map it onto the y-axis here in the negative side of the quadrant you will see that this it is a neg the, the, the withdrawals are negative here so uh, pause here and think about what the possible reason could be I will just reveal the question no uh, answer now and we will move ahead given the time constraint you can pause here if you want to think about it otherwise here is the answer and take a look and then read it please it's very simple to understand I'm gonna move ahead to read it you might want to pause it as well but I'm gonna go ahead into the to the next slides and explain the same concepts using an income and expenditure approach so now we have the uh, this is the second approach of uh, Keynesian diagrams <laughs> if you remember we had this XY plane again from before our withdrawals and injections stay the same now the approach here is slightly different here we take the income national income as the consumption of domestically produced goods and then the withdrawals remember this is the income part of it we consumed part of which was withdrawn I'll just go back to this circle economy you remember this so if this income uh, this think of this as national income all accruing to to the to the households now if there is no the no government no no other third sector then obviously everything goes into the firms again but then if you remember so this would be the aggregate demand yeah on this side while this side gives us the income level but now it turns out incomes are equal consumption of domestic goods now but if we had the withdrawals then income would be in the absence of injections would be consumption and then the w so consumption plus w yeah that is the income now aggregate expenditure then would be oops i'm going backwards would be then this yeah the the uh, j plus cd yeah so income is basically at the same time the sum of the two 
and um, the aggregate expenditure is the sum of these two yeah remember the the these are kind of savings here or things that are taken away from the economy not put into the economy while once they are turned into J's injections they become uh, expenditure because we're spending on goods now capital goods produced by the government uh, oh sorry the, the firms and government's expenditure on goods and services and also uh, abroad the, the ex export expenditure here that people from abroad buying us so these are expenditure alongside CD is also expenditure yeah okay so we'll go back to where we were first um, okay okay right so this is the income line notice that this this is basically giving us the income on the x-axis CD plus W is is plotted here on the y-axis so as a result we're doing a one-to-one -one mapping this is a 45 degree line yeah so Y is a 45 degree line now if we draw the consumption line here remember the, the, so let's take the consumption line before we come to the ex expenditure here I want to explain you something just quickly if you draw just consumption itself this was just the line if you remember without in the absence of all the withdrawals and injections uh, it start off more or less at the same level on the lower income but as the income level increases consumption uh, is not growing as quickly as income remember as we become richer and richer part of our income is saved or withdrawn so this is the part here yeah this this part here so it's less steeper than the income line here this income line is a straight line but then uh, consumption of domestic produced goods is uh, flatter and flatter over time as we get rich a fraction of our income is taken away from us while fraction is consumed by ourselves if we are a low income country for example we could expect our all our income uh, well, uh, when we were poor in other words all our income will be spent so we would have little saving this is the case for low income economies now they stay poorer poorer because they are not able to get out of this uh, um, yeah, so low income trap basically but as as their income increases they will also consume some of it but then more of it will be also withdrawn from the economy in the form of savings and other things so this is the consumption line as a result yeah it's less steeper uh, than the than, than, than our income so if you think of this total income part of it the distance here basically between the two is is basically withdrawals while the consumption is here however we also told uh, talked about consumption being part of the expenditure remember and and then j or injections were also part of the expenditure so if we sum cd and j we have a new curve called expenditure curve aggregate expenditure curve this curve is the aggregate expenditure curve so basically it's basically sum of cd and then j j this distance here this constant value here is equal to this distance here yeah all along along this curve basically the distance remains the same because the injections are the same so the sum of the consumption and then the uh, the, the j in injections is is giving us the aggregate expenditure now let's see where the equilibrium can be pinpointed here well obviously the equilibrium, equilibrium in this economy is the point where y equals expenditure in other words whatever we receive as income is equal to expenditure so we just uh, consume everything that we receive in other words well in the form of some of them uh, some of the income obviously will be in in the form of uh, withdrawals taken away some of them is taken back into the economy but then in equilibrium w equals j cd obviously equals cd and that's this point now let's look at this phase uh, sort of uh, uh, thought experiment let's assume that at lower uh, lower income levels and this is the case basically in reality low when we have low income in the low income economies our expenditure is usually higher than our income in other words we generate less income than what we uh, consume so we, we tend to in input more um, however if you remember if aggregate expenditure is greater than the uh, level of income well what happens is that firms tend to produce more 
yeah, they, they, they tend to invest more into plant and equipment and, f and they expand their capacity over time or if they expand their production if there is a capacity to do so potential output is higher if the potential output is higher than the actual output then obviously that leads to a greater employment of uh, factors of production so given the demand for goods they p employ more and pay more greater payments imply higher income so over time we tend towards this point where the income equals equilibrium uh, sorry income equals the aggregate expenditure now what if uh, uh, we start from a, a higher point of income for example where our income is higher much higher than our aggregate expenditure well that's again if you notice this uh, in this case withdrawals the income is greater because of withdrawals high withdrawals imply lower uh, injections well high withdrawals due to not spending uh, the withdrawn cash basically leads to uh, low economic activity you know those people are just saving more not spending more or well, government is not spending more which means then for the domestically produced goods there is less demand less demand implies less hiring of people less hiring of uh, capital less less building of uh, or less construction in other words so the less employment income so overall economic uh, economy's income declines over time as a result until the point uh, where the um, equilibrium uh, is reached where the uh, total income equals the aggregate expenditure so that's how uh, equilibrium ach is achieved or the economies achieve their equilibrium in other words this is point of uh, sort of loop that continues going round and round uh, in circles, income goes round and so in circles, uh, where and in some cases the, in, uh, the, uh, the withdrawals are greater, in some cases injections are greater. Either way, it, each 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 of these changes stimulate the more economic activity or less of it, and as a result, we end up having a, we tend to we naturally tend to go to the equilibrium point. Now. Uh, in the next, uh, by the way, if, you, if I go back to, you see that I whether it's an, a national, uh, the income and expenditure approach or the injections and withdrawals approach, we, we, we have exactly the same equilibrium point. It's just different ways of looking at this uh, model here, economic model. Now, we still haven't answered the question of how much, by how much aggregate demand changes ap uh, affect uh, national income. And that's uh, the topic for the next video basically it's the multiplier uh, topic or the, the keynesian multiplier okay then see you in the next video